I'm a bartending pro and coming up in this one we're going to learn about buying your customers drinks. So in this episode I want to talk to you about how you can go in to bars and sometimes you'll see the bartenders buying customers drinks. Maybe you've had a drink bought for you I would hope. So we're going to talk about how that happens. So basically when you are in a bar you're gonna have what's generally called a house tab which this is just a comp tab that you ring stuff up when you buy a friend or somebody whose birthday or whatever the occasion whatever the reason might be and you put it on the comp tab the reason that you do this is that everything that's poured in a bar has to be accounted for so even if it's being bought for a customer and they're not paying for it it has to be accounted for. The reason you have to do this is because you have to track the poor cost. The poor cost is basically a ratio of how much a bar spends on how much they make. Your house tab is generally gonna be set to a certain amount, and this varies depending on where you work. They can run anywhere from, I would hope, at least 10 to 20 bucks per shift, all the way up to $100 or more per shift or per day that the bartenders can use to compensate whoever might be using them. It's important because you want to be able to buy a customer's drink. Somebody that comes in all the time, it's a good regular, you want to reward them buying them a drink every once in a while. Somebody comes in, it's their birthday, you want to be able to buy their drink for them. And so a house tab is a key part of any bar that you're going to go work at. Now there's a couple different types of house tabs. There's just a straight up comp, like I'm buying this guy a shot because he's a good local or something, or he's my buddy and I want to buy him a drink. So generally there's just the regular comp tab, which is just your generic house tab. Then there's also a spill tab. So this is like if I'm sitting there at the bar having a drink and I knock my beer over, you're going to want to refill that for me, unless I'm just wasted and then you're going to kick me out of the bar. But if it's a genuine accident, you don't want to make someone pay for a beer that was knocked over by accident. There's a million different scenarios, but just say accidental spillage of a cocktail or what have you. You don't want to make the customer rebuy that drink when it's not their fault. And even if it is their fault, you generally re-pour that for them anyway. And, and you know, you can make a joke like, ah, damn, got my eyes on you, take it easy, one more of those and like that and you're out of here, you know, whatever. But generally, the standard norm is that if somebody spills a drink, then you're gonna buy them a new one. Now, if it's almost empty, then you can still pour them a little bit. Usually, if somebody knocks over a drink and it's at least half full or more, then you're gonna give them another one. So there's the spill tab. Maybe you'll have a didn't like comp, like sometimes people just don't like it. You know, you pour them, oh, we got this new beer in, and they, they're like, oh yeah, sure, let me have one. And they order it and like, yeah, I'm not really into that. And so you can give them something else and you might be, you might put that on the didn't like comp tab or it might just go on the regular comp tab. So I don't wanna, I, don't, I wanna try to keep this as simple as possible. Basically there's a variety of different tabs that you can use. The exact type or name of those tabs, you won't know until you get to your specific establishment. And then once you do get there, you can ask them, okay, how much are we allowed for this, this, and this tab? Those are the types of tabs available to most bartenders at most establishments. So who should be bought drinks? This is kind of a wide open playing field. Most people that come in that are good friends of yours, you can generally buy them a drink. Now you don't wanna buy them everything. Comp what you can, but don't go overboard. Don't use your whole freaking house tab on your two buddies that come in and sit there for an hour. That's just a phenomenal way to get in a lot of trouble with your boss. I would say that the kind of unspoken rule is that you're, most people only expect to have one drink comped per person, right? That there's three people. If they have three rounds and they're your friends, you can maybe buy them around. And again, this just depends on where you work. Some places are really strict about this. Some places, maybe you can only buy one person per tab a drink or who knows what the general rule is. There's, there's a lot of gray area in this and you have to ask your management, have to ask your fellow bartenders kind of the rules of how things work in your establishment when you get there. But friends are obviously a great category that you're gonna use a lot when you're buying drinks for people. The other probably big one are your locals. A lot of your locals that come in a lot, you're gonna to wanna to take care of them. I mean, they're your best customers, so why not buy them a drink? A lot of your good locals are gonna be used to this. And this is another reason that I've said in other videos that one of the things you wanna do when you get to a bar is you wanna to get to know your customers 
customers and your locals especially as quick as you can. The other thing that happens with locals is expecting to have a drink bought. Now, nobody should ever expect to get a free drink. However, the reality of the situation is that a lot of people will grow to the point where they almost expect it. So if you're like the new bartender in town and you don't buy them a drink, they're automatically not gonna like you very much because you don't know who they are and you didn't buy them a drink, which sounds absolutely absurd because they're a customer at our bar, at your bar, but that's just the nature of the beast. To kind of tail onto that, like your friends, don't overcompensate your friends, don't overcompensate your locals either. Other good people for comp, obviously parties, celebrations, birthday parties. Always buy someone their drink on their birthday. Whether it's a shot or a beer or a cocktail or a wine or whatever, just one drink and then you'll be pretty good with that. The last thing I'll say about this stuff, you don't want to be using your house tab to buy your friends and customers and whoever the nicest that you have in the house. I mean, you don't want to buy them a $50 snifter of cognac because they're your homie or you think that they're hot and you want to get in their pants. Use cheap stuff as much as you can. That means your friends, that means your locals. If you can get away with pouring something a little bit cheaper, then do it. This is just gonna stretch your house tab. Sometimes, and this is kind of a gray area that's probably technically not the way you're supposed to do it, but this is just between me and you, so don't say anything. What I will tend to do is when I'm working and I get there during happy hour, I might put it on the house tab before. So I'll preemptively add it to my house tab so that I have technically accounted for and bought them a drink, but it's at a cheaper rate so we can extend the rest of our house tab. Does that make sense? And that's just something that you can do to stretch your house tab. All right, I think that's good for this one. We'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure that I answer anything that I didn't clarify clearly in the video. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'm Bartending Pro, I'll see you next time. Peace. For more kick-ass videos, check out these playlists. And subscribe to get new videos almost every day. Bartending Pro out!